Sad breaking news to report this morning that two Americans are among the dead in the Brussels terror attacks. This, of course, had been feared. Americans had been missing, and now we have had confirmation. Meanwhile, hundreds of people are still in the hospital or at home trying to recover from this attack because so many were injured. Joining me now is two, are two survivors of the attacks, Dr. Laura Billet and Laura Harper. They were outside of the airport during the attacks, and they sprang into action to help the victims until first responders could arrive. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Dr. Laura, Dr. Laura B.A., I want to start with you. Are you aware that Secretary of State John Kerry just cited you and your heroism in this press conference? I, I just heard a, a sound clip from, from it, so that, that, that's new news to me. Okay, we have that sound of John Kerry to play for you as well as our viewers. Listen to this. We should learn from the example of an American doctor, Laura Billet, who had just left the airport here in Brussels when she and a friend heard the bombs go off. She ran to a nearby police station and started to triage victims. She tended to any victims who came through the door doing what she could to treat shrapnel wounds, burns, and other injuries that she'd never seen before. Dr. Laura, what is it like to hear John Kerry talk about you? Um, well, it's, uh, like I said before, it's, it feels very strange. I think um, the real heroes in the situation were the first responders. Laura Harper and I were there, and we did what we could, but I think anybody else would have done the same under the circumstances. Dr. Laura, I'm not sure about that because what you did is unthinkable to many people. When you heard the explosions, instead of running away, you ran towards the trouble. And can you tell us what happened? You are a trained doctor. I know that you thought that you could help people, but were you scared to run into the airport? And, and what did you see once you got there? Well, actually, I didn't, I didn't run into the airport. I was dropping my friend Laura Harper and my, uh, my brother-in-law uh, off at the airport at the time. And um, when, when we heard the bombs go off, we, we ran away from the bombs um, towards the police station um, where we were uh, shuttled in by uh, uh, some people that were standing outside. And then they started mo moving all of the wounded that could be moved out of the airport to the police station um, to get them out of harm's way. We didn't know what else was going to happen after that point. Um, so, uh, you know, it was still, it was still frightening um, to be there because we were kind of waiting to see if there were other bombs or if somebody was going to come along uh, with guns. We weren't really sure. And there were a lot of wounded people up in the second floor of the police station. So then we started um, going uh, and trying to help the people that were there since we were able-bodied and most of them weren't at that point. So. Yes, I mean, I think that most people, myself included, would be scared just to stay in that area, even if it was a police-designated area where victims were being brought. But Laura Harper, I want to bring you in because you're not a doctor. You are a lawyer and a, a mother of three. What did you do after the explosions? Um, I was a coward. I was hiding under a desk. And um, I asked Laura to pray with me, and we prayed the Lord's Prayer. And then Laura said, if there's hurt people, I'm going to go help them. And um, I didn't go immediately. Um, I thought I was going to be sick from the smell and the sights of people with burns and blood on their face. And then Laura came to me and said, you need to come help these girls. And so I did um, what little help I could offer. And what were you able to do, Laura? They spoke English, and not a lot of people did, and they were scared and hurt. And so I sang with them, and um, I tried to answer their questions. Um, they were looking for their parents, and I said, you know, just look at all these people helping. There's people helping. Um, it's going to be OK. Um, and uh, I tried to get the paramedics to come quickly to uh, get them, um, because they were, you know, they were small, they were young, and um, the most injured of the people that I saw. 
Boy, Laura, it is uh, just heartbreakingly poignant to hear e how you were able to help, even though you're not trained to do some uh, to do that, and just try to keep their spirits up. Um, how are you doing now, three days after the attacks? You know, it's going to take a long time to get over what happened. Um, you know, I'm a person of faith, and. So I have to believe that even though there is evil in the world, that there is good in the world, and that we long for a place that's better than this, um, and that place is not in this world. So um, it's going to take a long time. Yeah. Dr. B.A., you are a doctor, but no one can really be mentally prepared for this, we went and spoke to the emergency room doctors last night. They had done drills, they'd done simulations in the event of a huge catastrophe, but they said that they're never trained enough when something like this actually happens. How were you able to sort of summon the strength to uh, help, given what you were seeing? I think. Um you know, the medical training kicks in. You know, I've certainly seen a lot of people in life and death situations, a lot of people that are really ill um, and run, you know, CP codes and stuff like that. So you kind of, um, your mind just kind of switches off and goes to a sort of a, okay, function type of mode where, I mean, it was, it was scary and there were a lot of people that needed help. Um, but, I, you know, you just sort of switch into that, like, let's get this done kind of mode and just do as much as you can. The hardest part for me, because um, I've never seen a mass casualty situation before, was that um, you know there were so many people that needed help and then it seems a little bit overwhelming right at first because a lot of people are asking for help or they're begging for help for somebody who's, who's next to them that they, that they care about, that they know is injured and uh, having to tell people like, okay, you know, um, I will come back. I need to go check something else. That that part was really hard because normally I, I don't have to do that. When I see somebody that needs help, I can focus a little bit more on them. And so I think that's the part where the training in mass, mass casualty maybe would have been useful, which I don't have. But um, you know, we did the best that we could, and I think it was fantastic that the paramedics got there um, and, and were able to bring people to the hospital pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, the, the first responders are the, yeah. are the big heroes here. They put themselves in harm's way, and they did so much work to get people safe. So, But, I mean, people begging for help and not being able to get to them as a doctor, you know, we can only imagine um, how much that weighs on you. So now, three days later, how are you doing? <laughs> I, uh, I also feel similarly to Laura, um, Laura Harper. I think it's going to take a lot of processing time. Um, I'm in the middle of a big move, so I haven't really had any time to slow down and think about any of this yet. And I think that once I do, I'll start to, you know, um, I'll start to feel some of the consequences of what happened. Um, when we had the movers here yesterday, uh, anytime anyone dropped an object, I kind of jumped, which was surprising to me because I didn't think that the bombs actually sounded that loud when they went off. But I, I think I, I have some sort of uh, subconscious tension here um, that I'll have to work through eventually. So yeah, it's definitely it's going to take time. I know that you both, you both still wanted to um, help the people here of Brussels and the victims. And I know that you wanted to mention this uh, GoFundMe project in a way that you can help. Uh, Laura, tell us what what you want our viewers to do. There's a, I hope it was this, Laura, um, that you're asking. There's a website, gofundme.com forward slash pray for Brussels, that is raising money for the victims. Um, and once a charity has been established uh, to help specifically the victims of the bombings at the airport and at the metro, those funds will be given to them. So, you know, we're always asking what can we do to help. That's something you can do to help. Yes, it's very nice not to feel helpless and to think that we can uh, still help those who are, are suffering. Laura Harper, Dr. Laura B.A., thank you very much for taking time for New Day and sharing your story. We think you're both heroes, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you.